Hi guys, it's time for Money Mondays brought to you in partnership with Proven Wealth. Quite a few developments in the money world this week to pay attention to. I've got a Wigton update, a pretty massive business deal in banking and insurance, and some important actions by the Bank of Jamaica. As usual, I'll tell you everything you need to know. Let's start with Wigton. The company will be listing on the main market of the Jamaica Stock Exchange this Wednesday. Now after that, let the trading begin. So let me give you some of the headline numbers on Wigton. 31,000 people have bought shares in this company. These investors offered up 14 billion Jamaican dollars for a total demand of 28 billion shares. But remember, only 11 billion shares were up for sale. And what did I tell you a couple weeks ago? That means it's oversubscribed. There are not enough shares to meet the demand. So when trading begins on Wednesday, there's likely to be some excess demand resulting in an increase in share prices as those people who didn't get all the shares that they wanted seek to buy more. But here's the other side of that. The shares were allocated on a bottom-up basis. So everyone who applied for shares got shares, just that some people didn't get everything they wanted. In the public sector pool, everyone who applied for 15 million shares or less got everything they wanted. But that pool was oversubscribed, so there are some people who wanted more than 15 million shares. In the general pool, everyone who applied for 8.5 million shares or less got everything they wanted, but that too was oversubscribed. So here's the question. Will those people who wanted more than 8.5 million shares or in the public sector pool who wanted more than 15 million shares be satisfied with what they got? Because that's still a significant number. If they still want more, then you can expect to see them trying to buy out other investors. But where I think the real demand will actually come from is from people who didn't apply under the IPO, who are now having a serious case of FOMO, you know, the fear of missing out. Those people who thought about it and passed and then they regretted it and by the time they changed their mind, it was too late. Or those people who just who wanted to, but they just didn't have the money at the time. So I do think that there will be some demand for Wigton, but let's watch what happens after Wednesday. Another big thing to look at closely in the world of stocks this past week and going forward is JMMB and Sagicor. JMMB is buying 20% of Sagicor Financial Corporation. That's the parent company of Sagicor Jamaica, which includes their banking and insurance operations in not just Jamaica, but 20-something territories across the Caribbean and the U.S. It's a 200 million U.S. dollar deal, so a real power move by JMMB that diversifies their business and gives them another solid additional income base. I spoke with JMMB Group CEO Keith Duncan last week after the announcement, and he was very confident that this will end up being very profitable for shareholders. He also says JMMB will not be involved in the operations of Sagicor Jamaica. The management will remain separate. As you know, they're competitors in banking. Now, JMMB Group share price jumped 13% on Thursday when the news came out. And just letting you guys know, I'm not a licensed financial advisor, just telling you the information. The last thing I want you to know about this week is some news coming out of the BOJ, the Bank of Jamaica. Three pretty big announcements, actually. One is news just in this morning. They're going to start releasing information about all U.S. dollar transactions above 100,000 U.S. dollars. And the reason for this is to help explain all these sudden dramatic changes in the exchange rate. Like in a period of a couple of weeks, you'll see just jump $5 out of nowhere. They've been saying that essentially because Jamaica's market is so small, one big transaction can have an impact on the whole system. And a lot of companies have been paying off their U.S. dollar debt and switching to Jamaican dollar debt. So they have to buy a large amount of U.S. dollars at once, and that sends the entire exchange rate up. So this move by the BOJ adds more transparency so we can see for ourselves when that's happening and why. Another thing they're doing, effective June 3, and this is major, guys, they're reducing the cash reserve requirement to 7%. Now, the cash reserve is the amount of money that the banks are required to hold at the BOJ. So what this does is it frees up $12 billion that they're no longer forced to deposit at the BOJ. So what are they going to do with it? Well, they're going to want to lend it to you. So in the coming months, expect to see even more competition among the banks as they try to lend out all that extra money. Expect to see interest rates coming down some more and better terms for lending across all sectors, mortgages, 
car loans, business loans, you name it, you'll probably be able to get a loan for pretty much anything on fairly reasonable terms pretty soon. At least that's what I hope. Now, what I'm looking to see is those small business loan rates coming down because that's where we really need to see a change if we want to grow the economy. The other big move by the BOJ last week is that they lowered their policy rate to a jaw-dropping 0.75%. Now, the BOJ's policy rate is what sets the pace for all the other financial institutions. So if they're at less than 1%, they're sending a signal to the banks that they should be bringing down their interest rates too. It's a pretty big drop all at once, and it begs the question, will they be moving to a 0% policy rate? I had asked the BOJ governor about that sometime last year because I heard the finance minister suggesting it, but at the time, the governor seemed a bit skeptical about that approach. But now I'm here wondering, hmm, because 0.75%, that's pretty close to zero. Anyway, so watch what the banks are doing in the coming months and how they're responding. That's it for Money Mondays this week, guys. I'm Kalila. See you next week.